Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Holliday, and in the time since I started this series of reviews on Bought the Movie, my channel has grown exponentially large, and because of that, I figured I should introduce what exactly is going on. Uh, I am right now recording the final two episodes in this episodic movie review that is chock full of bad pseudoscience. Uh, it's a long-form review style where I tackle very specific issues with uh, each one of the episodes, and I address them individually. As such, this is the final chapter, and I will be recording these last two episodes all in one stretch. So, without further ado, let's roll the intro one more time. Released in March of 2015, Bot the Movie is a perfect storm of fear-mongering pseudoscience that utilizes the plight and suffering of real family tragedies to push a narrative of suspicion and conspiracy. It is the intent of this video series to illustrate the glaring errors and pseudoscientific claims made by the people involved in this movie, and to expose the dangerous rhetoric that is espoused by the creators and the people that they have brought on as experts. Right off the bat, at the beginning of this film, we get this gem. All the obesity, all the attention deficit, autism. We didn't see these things then. This is relatively new. And so, relatively new, what have we introduced? Genetically modified foods, which have genes that have been spliced and mended with other genes. Genes from not only different species, but different kingdoms of animal. This illustrates the sheer ignorance of the film's creators and producers. Yes, there is such a thing as the animal kingdom. However, in biology, taxonomy, or rather what we use to classify biological life, kingdom is the second highest tier of classification. The different kingdoms are animals, plants, fungi, protista, and the bacterias. And in addition to that, there is no such thing as an animal gene. No such thing. What do I mean by that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You see, genes are just a series of nucleotides inside DNA that are arranged in a certain pattern that tell that life form what proteins to produce, and those proteins then produce the life form in and of itself in a really dumbed down sort of way. But when you're talking about animal life, it's, it's the same four nucleotides, four, only four, and they're just arranged in specific patterns. So because of that, if you really get down to the basic, basic fundamentals of how genetics work, it's just the same four building blocks, but put into different sequences. Now, are there sequences that are only found in specific plants or animals? Sure. But trying to just simply say a jellyfish gene is a grossly misinterpretive way to try and talk about the issue. And when you have a documentary where people are supposed to be talking as some sort of experts, but they don't actually understand the basic fundamentals of what they're talking about, it's a problem. So the movie gets into vaccines and it goes on for about 45 minutes or so, but then starts to segue into GMOs. Our oldest boy came down with what looked like behavioral issues, but they were actually autoimmune issues. I started looking into diet as a way to build up my son's immunity. When I really started looking into GMOs, like technically how they're farmed, I was horrified and I was motivated to go out and tell people. The blonde woman's name is Kathleen Halal, and she promotes herself as a mommy healer, which is a common trope throughout most of this film. And the woman sitting next to her? I have three sons. Ben is 10, Bodie's eight, and Bronson is five. They all had allergies, dairy, wheat, and gluten, nuts, and eggs. And I had other friends that had kids with those allergies, so I just sort of put up with it. I didn't know what was going on. I don't know why they had allergies, but it was just something I had to put up with, right? That's Zen Honeycutt, founder of Moms Across America. And when I say that this group is dangerous, I'm not being hyperbolic. They routinely lie about genetic modification technology, and they also promote this idea that eating organic can somehow cure allergies. But is it dangerous? Consider this. You're a young child, and you have a peanut allergy, and your mom has bought in wholesale into this idea that organic food can cure your allergy. Now what happens when your mom, so convinced of this, throws away your epinephrine pen, and then you accidentally eat peanuts at a restaurant? So I started researching and I found out that there are GMO foreign proteins in our food since 1996. They first started in the milk. Okay, this one has always really bothered me. How can you have GMO milk when there's no such thing as a GMO cow? 
Unless, of course, you're talking about the cow eats some sort of GMO feed, and then it, it somehow survives the, the furnace of its stomach, it gets into its milk glands, it excretes it into the milk, it survives pasteurization, and then the kid drinks it, and it, it has some sort of effect on them? Huh? There's three kinds of GMOs. The first one, it's called BT toxin. It's either in corn or soy or cottonseed. It is genetically engineered to constantly reproduce this BT toxin. Oh, this one is fun. BT, or Bacillus thuringiensis, I always have trouble with that one, is in fact a pesticide. It sure as shit is. But it's not a GMO. There are GMOs that are specifically designed to make their own BT. But BT in and of itself is an organic pesticide. Yeah, they, they use organic BT pesticides on organic food. So this whole concern that you might be eating BT, well, if you eat something with an organic label, you might be doing it anyway. But you see, BT is a really fascinating one too because it works by interfacing with a certain chemical inside the stomach of caterpillars. That chemical does not exist in the human body anywhere. So it makes it completely safe for humans to eat, but it's lethal to caterpillars. Kind of like how you're not supposed to feed chocolate to a dog, but you can eat chocolate. The second one is Roundup Ready. The plant has been genetically engineered to withstand Roundup. They can spray it with all the Roundup they want, which is an herbicide at the tune of five billion pounds a year, and it doesn't die. It soaks into the plant and it does not wash off. The problem with that is that there's a chemical in it called glyphosate, which destroys our gut bacteria. Bzz, wrong! Glyphosate does not, in fact, destroy your gut bacteria. They're referencing vaguely to a study done by a man named Anthony Samsel, as you can see here, does not know how to capitalize his name on LinkedIn. But it's also written by Stephanie Seneff. Yes, the very same Stephanie Seneff that I have mentioned previously in other episodes, who thinks that half the world is going to become autistic. Yeah. I'm not really going to get too much into the, the meat of this study in and of itself because they only vaguely reference it as they only vaguely reference everything, but I do have a great link to a Skeptoid article down in the description, so check it out. 70% of our immune system is there. Without that gut bacteria, we can't produce tryptophan. Without tryptophan, our bodies don't produce serotonin. Without serotonin, we can't regulate blood sugar. Diabetes now, which is hugely on the rise, cost our federal government $279 billion a year. The projection is that in 13 years, we will not have money for any other health care at all, except for diabetes. So in the grim, dark future, everyone will be autistic and diabetic. Okay. By the way, I feel at this point I should mention that Moms Across America, much like most of the people that are featured in this uh, documentary, also sell supplements on their website. So, uh... Yeah. Hmm. The third type of GMO is a GMO that doesn't have pesticides injected into it. It's actually just a desired trait. Let's say you want to have the lettuce to be more green or the tomato to be more red. They inject this desired trait in, but the problem is, is it has two promoters on either end of it. And these promoters' jobs are to wake genes up. What a mind-numbingly inaccurate way to explain genetic modification. We as moms are concerned that these promoters could be waking genes up in our children's bodies. We all have latent cancer genes or maybe even rare diseases that are just latent, right? That may never wake up or anything. But with these promoters waking genes up, who knows what's happening? Right. There's been no testing on that. And why is all of a sudden cancer the number one killer of our children? So in this make-believe situation, there are uh, people injecting food with these gene promoters. Which, by the way, you don't make GMO food by taking a crop and injecting it with something. That's, that's, that's not a thing. But let's say it is. Let's say that that's what happens and the plant magically changes. Its whole genetic code is somehow rearranged by this injection. And so it changes the genes of the plant. How then would these promoters that did the job to change the genetic code of a plant affect the kid? How would this make-believe boogeyman somehow manage to survive our stomach linings, drift somewhere into our body, find a cell or many cells, penetrate the outer cell wall, 
navigate all the way into the nucleus and then somehow, somehow find just the right sequence of code inside their DNA to make a change. What the fuck is wrong with you? The FDA has let us down. They failed us. Their whole job is to ensure that our food supply is safe. They haven't even taken the first basic step. They've never required independent long-term safety tests on genetically engineered food. They're relying on tests that are done by the very industry that stands to profit from both the sale of the seed and the sale of the chemicals that those seeds are genetically engineered to resist. Because Basing the need for research on how much it's consumed doesn't make any sense? I... I don't get that. And why is it they're only interviewing activists? Why are they doing that? If, if you want to make a documentary, you have to approach it from an objective point of view and get multiple sides if you can. This is not a documentary. This is propaganda. The basis by which they determine Genetically engineered foods are safe is built on a laughable and unscientific policy uh, called substantial equivalence. If you applied substantial equivalence to beef, for instance, a uh, cow with mad cow disease would be substantially equivalent to a healthy cow. What? So it would have the same protein and carbohydrates and vitamins as would a healthy cow, but it's obviously not safe. It's literally, it's literally in the graphic you just displayed. Here, look at it. If it's not safe, as safe as the other, it's not equivalent. How can you make that comparison? How in the world did the editors of this film not catch that? Or do they solely rely on people being lazy and stupid to sell this message? That's really insulting. Oh my God. So we're saying because genetically engineered corn has the same protein, carbohydrates, and vitamin A as its conventional counterpart, it must be safe. And that's not scientific, and it's not proof of safety. It's not proof of healthy food. No, that wouldn't be, but literally thousands of safety studies have uh, shown exactly that. My feelings on GMOs can really be summed up in one word, which is unknown. We do not know what are the long-term effects on humans and the environment. Yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. GMOs have been in the public market for decades. And despite thousands and thousands of safety tests, the only ones that have ever shown any harm whatsoever were found to be completely fraudulent or easily debunked. So anything that says vegetable oil in the stores or in an ingredient label on a processed food, same thing with anything that says soybean oil or corn or cornstarch or corn oil. There's something that seems kind of sneaky about manufacturing food and engineering it and marketing to us. And for some reason or other, they don't want to tell us what's in it. All foods have ingredient labels and that's what's in the food. GMO is not an ingredient. If you really need like a chemical list of everything that's in a food, well, here's one of an apple. Go ahead, freak yourself out by all the scary sounding words. But even with how annoying this part is, oh, the movie ramps it up and brings forth the food babe. What's your motivation to help other people? And especially in terms of to discover what they're actually eating in their food. Growing up, I had all of these ailments. I was on all these prescription drugs. The 400 plus dollars I spent at the drugstore every single month to know that I could spend a portion of that money towards organic food to even allow my body to feel better and heal naturally, but also to get off all of those pharmaceutical drugs. Vani Hari, AKA the food babe, has been making a fortune off of fear. She's become a celebrity mostly because of her social media presence and her tactics in which she goes after different companies. You see, her main tactic is this. She goes through the ingredient list of a food item, she finds a chemical sounding name, and then she goes to find that chemical in something that's dangerous. Well, for instance, like there's a, a chemical in beer and it also is found in antifreeze, hence why she, she claims there's antifreeze in the beer. But in reality, this is a totally benign chemical used for thousands upon thousands of uses. But, ooh, spooky language! Oh, and she also once complained about them pumping in nitrogen instead of pure oxygen on airplane flights, forgetting, of course, that a pure oxygen atmosphere is uh, highly explosive and apparently forgetting that the air we literally breathe every day is 78% nitrogen. 
So... Anyway, next we have Tony Bark taking a bunch of kids shopping, and it's... cringy. 